Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And this one is something I'm calling Sprites in a Box. Now I think this looks pretty nice, but in actual fact it's, it's pretty easy to do. So let's make a start on it. So let's check out our project setup, 1920 1080, 24 frames a second and a duration of 15 seconds. So the first thing we're going to do is to import our assets. So two-sided cube and two-sided cube back. And they look like this. I'm going to set this group to 3D and I want to move the back behind the, the main cube. And then I'm going to add a camera and just so we can get a feel for how this is working. So the thing I need to do is select this cube here and set its opacity to 99%. And immediately we can see through to the back like so. Now the back is not really the back. What it actually is, it's the forward facing normals of the inside of the cube. It's all a bit technical and don't worry too much about it. It's supposed to say it's what we need in order for the cube to look properly 3D and we can see the, the back of it. So then what I'm going to do is to duplicate that front cube and the one just behind it, the original, I'm going to set its scale to 97%. And then I'm going to duplicate this one as well. And this one in the front, I'm going to set that one to 97%. And then I want to open up the rotation and rotate it through 90 degrees on Y. And this one here, I'm going to rotate through negative 90 on Y, just so we've got a different texture and it's not uh, duplicating like so. And so now we've got a sort of depth to the glass. So then I'm going to reset the camera and I'm going to import the thing called mini sphere. It's obviously pretty mega, but we're going to reduce its scale down to 7%. That's more like it. And then I'm going to move it between those cubes. So two cubes at the top, two cubes at the bottom. And any one of these objects, I'm going to select reveal environment lighting and turn it down to, I don't know, somewhere around 20%. Then I'm going to reselect the mini sphere and come to its position. And to its exposition, I'm going to add parameter behavior, oscillate. Let's set the amplitude to 220. And then let's duplicate the oscillate. Right click duplicate. This time, let's apply it to the Y position. Let's have a phase of 4 and a speed of 12. And let's duplicate it again for the Z. So apply it to the Z position, set the phase to 6 and the speed to 14. These are kind of random numbers, I just don't want to, them to be all the same. So then I'm going to duplicate the mini sphere, right click duplicate, and we'll just mix up some of these values. So go for 17 there on the speed, 15 there, and 11 there, and change up the phase there a little bit. And then right click duplicate again, come over to the behaviors. This time let's set this phase to eight, for example, this one to five, and that speed to 21, this one to 11, and this one to, ah, this one to nine. I see in the previous instance, I accidentally set that to one, and I actually wanted that to be 11. There you go. So now we've got those all moving around in different fashion. And what we can next do is to add a light. I'm going to give it a little bit of color, just a little bit of warmth like that. And then set its fall off to five. Then what I want to do is I want to link it to the mini sphere. So I'm going to zero out the Z, add parameter behavior link to the overall position and grab the first mini sphere. And now that's linked to that. And I'm going to duplicate that light. And then we'll just swap out the linked object for the second mini sphere. Duplicate it again. And in the behavior, swap out that link to the third mini sphere. So now we've got a light attached to, to each of them. 
So I'm going to select all of the lights and reduce their intensity down to 20%. It's a little bit more like it. Then I'm going to come down and select the top mini sphere, come to object new group, makes a new 3D group, grab those and drop it into that new group. And to that group, I'm going to add filters, glow and neon. And what I want to do here really is knock back that mix value to something like 50%. Uh, so that now they've kind of softened off, they look more like glowing objects. I'm going to select any 3D object and just turn that environment now down to zero. And that's much more dramatic. So then I want to add some ambient lighting. So add a new light and I'm going to set its colour to be something a little bit cooler. So we've got a bit of colour contrast. Uh, pump up the saturation just enough to give us a bit of colour. And going to set its Y position to 400 and its Z position to zero and its X position to negative 400. And then I'm going to reduce its intensity down to 50 and its fall off to 10. And then I'm going to duplicate it and just move it across the other side on X. So positive 400 on X. So now you can see how that's lighting up the outside of the cube on those two faces. Then I'm going to take my camera, reset it again, come to project, import, and I want to import my floor. So it's cracked concrete and I'm going to drag it down to a new group right at the bottom there. And then I'm going to group the concrete inside that and turn this group to 2D. Fixed resolution and 4000 by 4000. And then to this group, I'm going to add filters, tiling and collider tile. And I'm going to set the width to 375 and the height to 250. Then I'm going to select that group. I'm going to rotate it through negative 90 on X and I'm going to move it down negative 260 on Y. So now that's a floor for our cube to sit on. Select the camera. And what I'm going to do is switch the camera type to viewpoint, reset it and set its Z anchor point to a negative 1450. And then come to behaviors, camera and sweep. So now we're sweeping around and set my start value to negative 90 and my end value to positive 90. Sweeping around like that through 180 degrees all, all told. And then I want to come back to my Floor group and with the rectangle tool selected, draw a square holding down the shift key, reset its position. I'll rotate it through negative 90 on X and move it down negative 260 on Y. Come over here, turn on the fill, turn off the outline, make the fill black. Come to geometry, set that size to 500. Come back over to style and set the feather to 50 and then the fill opacity down to 50. And what that's doing is creating a kind of contact shadow, as you can see there for the, for the cube, and that just kind of ties it in. It's always something that's really quite important to do to create these kind of little shadows that, that especially with 3D, which doesn't come with its own shadows. So I'm going to reduce the intensity of those outer lights down to 20%, I think. And these three, let's reduce them, increase their fall off to eight, and I also think I'm going to increase the intensity of that colour. So let's just pump up the saturation a bit like that. You bring down the brightness. So I just want to keep this fairly moody, I think, like so. And maybe these outer lights can even come down even more. So let's go down to 10% on those. It just want to be a little bit of a fill. And I think that's looking a little bit better. And maybe my camera is a little bit too close. Let's just adjust that anchor point so we've got something better, I think. Let's go for, that looks good, negative 1750, I think. So there you go. That's the finished scene. It's surprisingly simple to do, uh, but very effective, I think. So thanks very much indeed for watching. I hope to see you again on the next one. Mm -hmm.